Hey guys, we're talking about the duels today. I'm getting close to losing light, so uh, once the once the sun and light starts going down, we're gonna have to curtain call this video. But I'm talking about the duels in this one. Clearly, they're on Thursday. We are waiting for the duel contest to be posted. They're normally up the Monday of the Daytona 500. It's the Monday of the Daytona 500. We do have the Truck Series and Xfinity Series contest posted. I'm assuming that they're gonna keep it a two slate. Or, or like each race being its own slate. If it's different, we're just gonna have to adjust to it. But um, just roughly speaking for the duels, and, and it's just gonna be me here. I mean, I've kind of already showed everything in the playlist that I kind of I want you guys to watch, where I go down and, and break it, break down duels specifically, and like where you can see the data and everything. So you can either look at my hentai board or anything else in the background, or just me in general, whatever you want to do. When we're looking at the duels, this is where. Kind of the opposite of all the other races. I mean, it is the opposite of all the other races. We want to play the good guys, okay? What makes somebody good? What makes somebody uh, a guy that you want to play in these duels? Well, you can look at this in one of three ways. One, he has good racing IQ. Like, we can just see it. Film study, as I said. We can just eyeball it. Like, hey, this guy actually knows what he's doing when he's leading the line, when he's getting through the field. Like, he's actually aware of what's going on. We can look specifically at his finishing positions in duels and in actual super speedway events okay typically like there's not a lot of dnfs in duels rarely if ever okay especially now with the you know the next gen car if you like these guys don't want to be tearing stuff up all right so we can look at guys who have good finishes in the duels and in the real super speedway races okay and so that thing that I was talking to you about, you know, in the other video the other day, this thing right here, this thing, this chart, these statistics, this is where, hey, you want to lean into that. You know, the event is only 60 laps. We're not tearing stuff up. We're not wrecking things. Yeah, sure. We're fighting for the starting positions of the 500. Well, like, fr frankly, who cares? The poll is already decided. Outside poll sitters already decided. You know, for, for roughly, it doesn't necessarily matter where you finish in this race. Like, the good cars and good speed and good teams are going to make it through the race. We typically see the people in the positions that you want to play are going to be those positions that offer you slight place differential. We don't need more than, like, three to four. Like, anything more than that is is a bit sus. Uh, I'm not entirely sure we're going to get that. Certainly, if you're starting, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21st, and all that in the duel, we, we don't need that. You know, if we're looking at place differential plays, they're coming from like 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. That's, that's where we're at. We also want to target guys who are starting up front. It's hard for you to lose positions in these races if you qualify well, if you're with a good team. I personally don't play the pole sitter. Uh, pole sitter is only viable in these duels in 2017. You know, so, I mean, really past that, we're seeing them kind of, we're seeing them just save the cars and, and not have to worry about it. Same thing with second and third place, depending on who it is. You know, you know, like, like when you look at duel number one, the pole sitter has started, or the guy who started second won it in 2021, finished third in 2017, second in 2016, like duel number two, outside pole sitter, uh, 21 finished fifth, 20th finished fourth, 18th finished eighth, 17th finished sixth, finished first in 2016. So, yeah, sure. The guy starting in second in the pools, you can take him or leave him. Really, that 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 is more driver dependent. But I'm gonna specifically target people who are starting from fourth to fourteenth. That ten positions right there, that's the that's gonna be a majority of my lineups and my interesting guys. Okay, uh, and I can even probably move that up to like third to fourteenth. You know, that area of positions is is really the only viable place I really want to go. Okay. I know we see some place differential come through from 16th and 17th, but I'm not focused on that. I want to focus primarily on the people who are going to finish up front. That's why we're talking about people like um, like these guys here. Like, clearly, like the Hendrick Motorsports cars, the Penske guys, you know, the 2311, Wallace, uh, Denny Hamlin, Reddick. Like, we're going to imagine, and certainly you can even add the, the Legacy Motorsports Club. You know, these since they're rocking Toyotas, this is where you want to stack, and, and this is where... Team stacking and manufacturer stacking is is another area that I would highly consider doing. Now, we granted, I'm not saying like just play all six Fords or whatever, but as I just said, like Wallace, Hamlin, they're good place differential or they're good plate racers. Okay, when we get to like a dual race and you see, hey, this race has more of the Toyotas than the other plate race, I probably want to play more of the Toyotas. I'd probably want to play the Toyotas specifically in that race. 
because they're going to work together. And, like, they actually have to pit together. They have to plan things out. I, I know I'm talking about a lot here, but, like, Chevy, for example. I know it's with Hendrick. I know you have RCR. These guys are freaking terrible at pitting, at figuring the strategy out. Okay? So, like... For me, I feel far more comfortable playing Fords and Toyotas in these races and trying to, I'm not saying max it or limit your entries or your, your, your Chevy exposure. But we have seen time and time again, the ECR guys, the, the guys running ECR motors, that's Hendrick, that's, that's RCR. I don't know what it is with them like having to pit right at the edge of their pit cycle, but they do it every time. And they usually screw themselves over. It, it's not always the case, but it seems to be with the Chevys. Like, it's not always the case that if you pit first, you're going to get passed on the track. But, man, if the Chevys are pitting first, they're going to get passed by the other manufacturers in these duels. Uh, like, that, that's absolutely huge. And so, like, little caveats are that I have, like, written down in my head that I that I want to pay attention to. And I have done well in, in these duels before. I almost won it either last year or the year before. I don't remember exactly. I may have finished, like, third or second. Um, but anyway, I'm bringing it up as like, I'm not worrying about place differential. I don't really want to play the bad drivers. You, what's that? You're an open car trying to make it into the 500. I could care less about you. I am not concerned about you. Typically all you idiots are just racing for like 17th, 16th, 5th, just trying to make the show. You normally don't even do anything. Okay. I'm, I'm not trying to chase the guys trying to race their way in. Cause that makes no sense. They are, in, in fact, they're probably the more risky plays. Cause like these guys have nothing to lose. I got to make the show. It's 42 cars. Also, they lied to us, man. They said we we have like a 44, 46 car field or 44, 46 cars trying to attempt the 500. That ain't happened. We only have 42. So like, you know, the go or go homers are are, are not that important for me. I could care less uh, about them and I'm going to have very little interest in them. Um, but yeah, like the Chevys, like, I don't know if I'll make it a rule because I'm, I'm going to manually be building these lines as well, but. Man, we have seen time and time again the Chevys are pretty dumb at trying to finish these races, man. It is it is pretty wild. It, is, it has been the Fords and Toyotas actually working together, paying attention, and, like, not doing anything stupid. Um, but it's it's going to be the good cars and good teams. Like, when we're just looking here, good car, good car, good car. And this is why it's drastically different compared to, like, the Xfinity series, the Truck series, the Daytona 500, because that's when I'm like, yeah, I love all these ugly bums down here. Any, any, anybody in like, you know, some jalopy is, is the guy I want to play. That's not here. And so like, when we're looking at good cars and good teams, like it's all of these drivers here, I would start removing people like Stenhouse, like LaJoy, Dylan, Briscoe, Haley, Todd Gillen. Like we have a good majority of, of the field that we want, and the reason why I'm excluding Stenhouse here is because he's very viable in the actual races, not in duels. I just personally don't want to be playing him in the duels. But uh, like, look, man, when I'm looking at like truly the top 18 guys ranked here are all guys that I want to target. Not all these guys are gonna be in the same duel. Each duel is 21 cars. Okay, this is 18 drivers. Well, however, these guys get split between the duels. Those are primarily primarily the guys you want to focus on. Actually, I'm not even showing it on my screen. These guys here, sorry. I was saying that, like, when you're looking at here, and I'm just using ra for racing reference here because it's easy to visualize and so you guys can see. Um, like, the top 18 guys here are all guys that I want to have in the player pool, that I, that I want to focus primarily on, and, and more than likely they're going to follow what I'm looking for. You know, we have 18 cars here. As I said, we have 21 in the, in the duels. I'm going to want to be targeting third to fourth, to 14th in these races, there's a good chance we got these guys in those positions between both duels, okay? Those are going to be the guys I want to target. We're not targeting place differential. We're not trying to build for a wreck fest here. We're not trying to do any of that, okay? The main thing we're focusing on is good guys who can finish well. Typically, finishing position is very much correlated with DraftKings uh, ranking in terms of fantasy points in the dual races, so most likely if you finish in the top four here, like your top four finishers, unless one of those guys comes from like second, third, or fourth, those guys are going to be the top four scorers. And so we're basically just trying to project where these guys are going to finish in the duel and then just play the guys that we think are going to most likely finish inside the top ten because then you can most likely land on your top six, on the six drivers that are going to be optimal and stuff. And that's how I'm going to go about it. That's how you need to go about it. We're not 
building for anything crazy. We're not building for wrecks. I don't want to be chasing the back markers or like the guys trying to get in because like those guys can be doing stupid. And Ford and Toyota are much better at green flag pit stall and strategy in races that go green than Chevy. That's just how it is. Don't know why it is like that, but go back and look. Go back and look at the duels. Go back and look at these races. Whenever you have an alliance between manufacturers having to pit together or not, Chevy always. They just Chevy. They just they just mess up. They are horrible at organizing stuff, and it's been year after year after year and year after year, and it happens so much. It like they're not gonna fix it. it. Happens in the duels. Happens in the Cup Series. Happens with Junior Motorsports and their pitting strategies in the in the Xfinity Series races where you have to pit under green. It's just wild. And so like, I would I would want to primarily focus on Penske, Roush for the Fords. When we look at the Toyotas, it's Joe Gibbs and Legacy primarily. Is there even any other Toyotas other than that? Should be those guys. And uh, like past that, you know, then you're like left with like the Hendrick guys who you would trust. Those would be the primary guys I'd want to focus on from the Chevys. Past that, you know, we're kind of getting sketchy with like, well, I mean, Trackhouse is probably more reliable than say like the RCR gang for this. So I would go with that. Anyway, so that's just kind of my thoughts. It's, it's real fast, like 10 minutes. Look, it's Monday. Speed Week is here. Uh, I'm going to be live on Thursday. I'm just going to get this out. You know, just really cutting to the point here. Yet again, my playlist, my 5-hour playlist, has all this stuff in greater detail. I'm just kind of going over it very fast for you so you to, for you to listen to it and then just move right on and things of that nature. So uh, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Feel free to support me and support everybody here at TrueDFS by joining the website, by tuning in the live shows, liking the videos, subscribing, whatever form or fashion you want to show your support please do and i will see you guys in the live show on thursday see you guys then